All right. So as, as many of you know that we, you know, Fraser, Nicole, Pamela, and I were all in Austin, Texas this past weekend for South by Southwest. We were down there with, with NASA and the Space Telescope Science Institute, Microsoft, Ball Aerospace, Northrop Grumman, University of Texas. And we were all working together uh, doing outreach for the James Webb Space Telescope where we had a full-scale model that uh, was about the size of a, a tennis court. It was four stories tall. I'm sure many of you saw our, our images out there. I'm still working on a few of them where I'm trying to make a, a really nice slideshow coming through um, for a video to be posting later this week. But uh, we had a, a fantastic time. Um, the, the weather on Friday and Saturday was pretty yuck. It was uh, it started off just cloudy and rainy, and then it got to being even heavier rain and two severe thunderstorms on Saturday night. So we did have to shut down the, the tent early a little bit, about an hour early on Saturday night, so it wasn't too much of a loss. We still got to interact with a lot of people and, um, and get to share the exciting new science that's coming on with the James Webb Space Telescope um, for, <coughs> excuse me, for those of you who don't know, James Webb is going to be the successor to the Hubble Space Telescope. And one of the really neat things about it is that it's going to be out at Lagrange Point 2. So it's, it's not going to be in orbit the way that, that Hubble is in orbit. It's going to be out far, far away. And we're not going to be able to send out any astronauts or any teams to repair it. So the, the folks over at Goddard and that are just doing so much testing on all the different components of the James Webb Space Telescope to make sure that by the time everything um, is ready to go, that it's going to be, you know, as, as fail-proof as possible. That, you know, that they're rigorously testing and designing to make sure that no matter what happens, they'll have really good science coming out of it. And that, you know, if, you know, they'll, they're testing all the, the solar sails and all the components to make sure that even if anything outside of, you know, the typical realm, so if something, there's an impact by micrometeors or something like that. They're finding every contingency possible that even if there is a tear in the in the solar shield that's blocking the, the solar radiation from coming to the mirrors, even if there is a tear, they're finding ways to limit that spread of, of any tear to actually try to keep the science happening for as long as possible. The, the lifetime for the mission right now is around 10 years, um, and that's because of fuel. So since it is going out so far, they're not able to refuel it. It's going about a million miles out. So <clears throat> since they picked Lagrange Point 2 out past the moon, they're you know, having enough fuel to have it to pitch on and go wherever it needs to go to observe. But beyond that, it's not going to be doing much as far as uh, any thrusting or stuff like that. So they have a really, a, not fairly limited, I'd you know, say 10 years of really good science with a fantastic telescope is, is well worth it. Um, it's going to be detecting in the, the infrared, near infrared. And it's, it's going to be really cool because the way that it's set up, all the hexagonal mirrors, it's going to be unfolding. And we'll be able to see further back into time and hopefully um, to the dark ages. So further back towards the Big Bang and try to help get observations to support the models of our modern cosmology. Um, checking out a few of the comments here. So, uh, and again, thank you for bearing with me. Uh, yes, Sylvan, it is cute. I didn't exaggerate. I am sick. <laughs> But, and yes, John, this is me, Scott. I should probably put down a, a lower third. As you can see, I'm a little drugged up and not, uh, I don't have everything prepared this morning or afternoon. Now, I, I did want to thank, we had a, a, a couple set of fans that come out every single day. We had people before we showed up waiting there at the tent. And it was really awesome to know that what we're doing here on Google Plus, as far as with the virtual star parties and the weekly space hangout, and learning space and everything we're doing with Cosmo Quest, we are making an impact. And to where was one of you that drove over six hours to come see us? You know, drove from Houston, bought a telescope. Uh, her name's Jamie. It was great. We helped us with the star party on Sunday night. So it was it was really great to be able to meet all of you um, that came out to either watch us do hangouts on air live, watch us do outreach, talk about Cosmo Quest, look at the the space telescope, and, and things like that. It was. It was really, really great being able to meet all of you and and know that we we're not just uh, 
we're not just having fun all the time. You know, we are doing some science, and we really do love doing science outreach and astronomy outreach, and being able to meet you guys and see um, what what you what you all love the most and uh, what you guys are looking forward to in the future was was really fantastic. Fantastic. So we do really appreciate meeting you guys coming out uh, any time in the future too. If we're ever out in locations, what we're hoping to do is to do more of is uh, going out and, and doing more live uh, live events. Please feel free to, to stop by and come say hi to us. We, we really do enjoy meeting up with everybody and uh, shaking hands and giving hugs and all that fun stuff. And <clears throat> finish up my lower third here real quick. Uh, one of my favorites, one of my favorite times uh, there at uh, at the NASA event down at South by Southwest was I got to meet Camilla finally. We've uh, we've interacted quite a bit through the different social media campaigns. So with with Facebook and Twitter and Google Plus, so we 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 know each other's snark a little bit. And finally, she she joined us for our um, our postponed weekly space hangout. So we had it on Saturday morning at the NASA tent just because of logistics. On Friday, we weren't able to have it then. And so we were able to talk with um, we were able to talk to the space telescope team and um, a local teacher from from Texas. And as far as getting being involved with James Webb, but uh, but Karen was there with with Camilla, and Camilla was going around throughout South by Southwest getting their picture taken. And I need to find it. I'm going to step out of camera real quick and show you my picture that Camilla and I, so they were doing um, Fuji instant camera um, shots with Camilla and here's Fraser and I, let me see if it's going to focus, there you are. So there's Fraser, myself and Camilla on Saturday morning and so Camilla uh, Corona from the Solar Dynamics Observatory was, uh, was going out through South by Southwest trying to get people excited about the new science happening with the Solar Dynamics Observatory and just finding different ways to engage the public. So we really do, um, I know I personally, I love the outreach that, that Camilla is doing uh, throughout, you know, throughout all the social media channels, but also in real life, like, like events like South by Southwest or going up on, on, um, on school high altitude balloon trips and things like that to where advocating for real science being done throughout you know throughout the world and, and finding different ways to reach out to people and see oh there's Tony making comments and yes you're very very true there Tony um, Tony Darnell the guy that did not get me sick and he's not sick so I don't know why you're not sick Tony but people worry about James Webb Space Telescope being so far away, but there is precedent. The SOHO spacecraft has been happily observing the sun at the L1 point, Lagrangian 1 point, since 1995. And if, if no one knows about SOHO, SOHO is fantastic. I believe there is an IMAX documentary about SOHO as well, and it's, it's amazing. I, I definitely recommend looking into, into um, any footage about SOHO and some of the observations going on. So it's, it's really giving us a great way of looking at our star and becoming intimately aware and understanding what's happening with our local star so we can help understand the dynamics of, of other stars across the, the galaxy. And I'm just I'm looking through all the comments. I appreciate the uh, guys' patience here. Christine, I, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, we didn't we were all over the place. I'm sorry that you didn't get us to come see us. We were we're at the NASA tent most of the time. I was also back in uh, in the media room with the, the NASA media team. So uh, we're tweeting a lot, putting out a lot of blog posts, Google+, Facebook, and um, getting ready for um, doing some videos. So if anyone hasn't seen um, Tony Darnell's Space Fan News, I did a, I did a recording with Tony, and we, we have a lot of fun, Tony and I. Uh, but it, it was great being able to talk about all the, the great events that are happening um, down at South by Southwest, so the different ways that you, the, the, the general public, but that everybody has the ability to be involved in doing actual scientific research, that it's not something just meant for ivory towers or laboratories or observatories, that everyone has the opportunity. And I, I personally feel that everyone has a, a, an almost sense of responsibility that this is our universe and it, it really behooves us to understand our place in it and becoming intimately aware of 
of what is helped building it and what what we're made of and how we can better understand what's happened in the past so we can help predict what's going on in the future and find our place in the cosmos. I, I, it was really fantastic being able to see the different groups. You know, we were there doing citizen science, but there were different ways for, you know, they had different models at the tent and being able to look at uh, yourself in the infrared, being able to observe what, um, in the way that James Webb's going to observe. So we typically think of light in a way that our eyeballs can see, but that's not all, that's not the limits of what light can do. And normally we're thinking about infrared, we're thinking of heat. And when we're talking about black body radiation, you can actually see light. If, if our eyes were able to look at the infrared spectrum, we would be glowing constantly because we are glowing just in that wavelength. And so it was really cool being able to see the infrared camera set up and they had some different displays um, for, for kids to come up and look at themselves with their hand dipped in water and seeing the difference between the, the light they're emitting when it hasn't been cooled off and when it has been cooled off with the water. So it really gave you an idea of understanding that it's not just a really big piece of machinery being sent out to space with big mirrors, but it's trying to understand and observe different parts of the universe that we haven't yet been able to observe on this scale yet. And let's see here. Thank you, Budini. Uh, <laughs> I'm sick. I don't know about awesome right now. I feel kind of crummy. But, oh, well, yeah, Fraser and Pamela were around quite a bit. We're all out at, at different locations. We, uh, we were mainly at the tent, but we we're also going out across the, the full-scale model. So we were out there with iPads doing some of the CosmoQuest Citizen Science with the mobile app that we're, that we're developing as far as with crater degradation. Um, or I could have been hiding, uh, very much could have been hiding and, and trying, to, trying to get some work done, done in, the, in the back. Um, the few of us were over at the Palmer Center as well because there was a display set up, um, the same one that was at AAS with Tony Darnell and Alberto Conti showing the, um, the, the, the mirrors that are going to be on. So you're able to actually look up at the, at the mirrors and they had two flat mirrors on each edge. So you can actually look and see the full reflectivity and the full size of, of the mirrors that are going to be up on James Webb. Um, one of my favorites, um, favorite parts about James Webb that they were talking about is uh, the fact that the, the mirrors are, are coated in gold and of course, a lot of people are thinking, gold, why are you sending gold out to space? It's expensive. Um, the, the biggest reason is because gold is so reflective of infrared radiation. And though we, we're thinking of gold is expensive, it's a precious metal, it's also for the entire size of the James Webb Space Telescope, it's about a golf ball size worth of gold. It's going to be thinly, thinly coated on there to angstrom's width and being coated on there around the, the brilliant mirrors and will really help us have a, a great understanding with those wavelengths of light coming in. But it really gives you an idea of thinking of, we have to use different tools and different materials to understand different parts of, of the universe, that not every way of observing and testing things will work the same. We do have to find different ways that light and matter interact with, uh, with each other and with in different ways depending on what the circumstances are. And so we, we do need to test and retest and re-experiment and trying to find the best way of understanding this phenomenon that we're trying to, to observe. And I, I think it's really an interesting way of approaching science too, is that thinking that we can't just send up a typical telescope, but larger, we do have to consider what it's made out of and how it's built and as far as the structural integrity and just the, even just the different coatings and how we're going to set it up to have it, it's going to un, you know, it's going to um, unfoil like like a butterfly or, or a flower. It's really cool. There's a lot of really neat um, uh, animations and videos about uh, JWST uh, unwrapping itself and and sitting out there in space. It's going to be really cool. And if, you know, Tony, you're, you're commenting. I'm just going to invite you in. I'm going to invite you in this hangout and talk to me. So uh, hold on. Let me invite Tony and have him just jump in my hangout. This is all impromptu. Hope you have a shirt on, Tony. All right. And yes, a, a golf ball is now a unit of, of gold. It's part of the cash for gold um, Phenomenon, so you can go in there with a the golf ball, and you can get a a golf bag's clubs worth of, 
of money coming out. Totally making this up on the fly. That's I'm your Tony. So what? So you're feeling yeah, like crap, huh? I, I I am. I feel like crud. Yeah. My fever broke last night. Well, that was good. So oh, bless your heart. I'm so glad you're better now. <laughs> yeah. So so share with us. I know that you did a couple space fan news. Um, I did one out there um, on uh, did it Friday with you, and then post. I didn't get a chance to post it till Saturday. So that's out there, um, and. Uh, at the very last, I think the highlight for me was at the very last minute I decided to try and record that uh, Guinness record attempt yeah, on yeah. Sunday night just for the hell of it. And uh, I mean, it, I had a terrible network connection, but you know, it, it managed to get most of it. I think, and uh, I learned a lot about how to do that. I think in the future, I've got this 4G LTE hotspot like you guys had, right. and I'm going to start using that instead uh, for this kind. Of it was yeah, it was weird because we did have Wi-Fi connectivity, but the it was spotty at best, and it would it had high latency, which is not good when we're trying to do any sort of, of live broadcasting. Yeah. Um, so for for those of you, we were talking about the the virtual star party that we did on on Sunday, and we were out literally in the middle of a field with three laptops trying to conserve battery life using. Um, yeah, my, my Verizon 4G LTE uh, hotspot, because even though we did have a Wi-Fi signal, um, it kept dropping in and out just because of how far away we were from any building. So there's there's definitely an, an art that goes on to trying to do remote hangouts on air for science, but we will still get it done. That was awesome the way that went out. I mean, if you had had a, a plug, just some AC so you could plug your, your laptops in, you would have been able to stay out there indefinitely. I mean, yeah, we, really we nice. would have. Um, and, I was, yeah, I was really impressed with the, with the way that it came out. I, I was doing some of the video processing on that last night for putting up onto the CosmoQuest uh, YouTube channel. Yeah. And yeah, the, the video actually came out really well. I was really happy yeah. with it. Yeah, so, so it's, it's You great. met some, some kids though, right? You, you met some of your local oh, yeah, fans? That was, yeah, that was a real, that was a real um, moment for me. I mean, it was, uh, so I was posting, you know, some videos up and, and people knew I was tweeting and all that other stuff that you do and and uh, um, yeah some people just the, the space fans that live in Austin came out to visit me I got um, uh, one of them gave me this a uh, really great gift oh hang on I'll get it hold on okay hey, and speaking of when we we're tweeting and everything like that uh, what my favorite is that Sarah Hemingway the the teacher that joined us on the on the show on Saturday she was there with her local school group, um, and they had uh, it set up in the in the NASA event tent. And so she tweeted me at like one thirty in the morning. And so we're we're all like Fraser and I were all trying to settle in and get ready for the next day. And I get a tweet at one thirty in the morning asking about the hangout and wondering if we'd like a local teacher. I'm like, of course we would. And so uh, she brought the Hutto hippo and uh, Camilla. Uh, Corona was there, so we had a picture about the hippo and Camilla the rubber chicken, and it was really great. And how social media has really allowed us to connect with people not only online, but ha has allowed us to actually meet people in real life. And Tony, you said that uh, you had some people out there as well that came by and see you. Yeah, so these were these were high school kids, but from the well uh, that had stopped by, and it happened one, each day. I was out there. There was uh, on Friday, three guys showed up. I made a uh, and. If they were willing, I made a video with them and posted that online. So I have one uh, for Friday night, uh, and I, I, a space fan named Jake came by on Sunday. Spent a long time out there with us, and, and and you know learned to talk with the, the the JWST engineers and learned all they could about the the model itself because he's really into that. But he gave me this. I hope I I can. Uh, he, this is a piece of art he did, and while you can't make it out, there's. There's, I believe that's um, uh, Aristotle or Socrates. I can't remember who okay. he said it was. And behind him is uh, the moon and an eclipse with uh, a, an image of the corona. Right. In the background, this red stuff is an actual star party that was that uh, with telescopes in the background. And then there's this is a brain, uh, somebody's uh, mind. He's touching his mind, going that's, in. That is awesome. Mind. And yeah, this was he does this uh, as, as uh, sort of an artistic release, and he gave this to me. This was from Jake. I made <clears throat> there was a video on my channel about him uh, where he came to visit. Awesome kid, really smart. And I think more than anything else, you know, it was it, it taught me that 
you know, when I look at the demographics of the people who watch the videos on YouTube, the science videos, I was always thinking it was me. You know, they're, all the right. demographics are basically men in their in their late 40s and early 50s, and you know, there's like 20 percent of them are, are female, and then there's this distribution of of ages, and and very right. few were in the young group. And I was really gratified that there were some high school age kids and stuff that were really into this, really into science, really into astronomy. And it really kind of gave me a warm feeling inside to meet those guys. They were incredibly enthusiastic and all of them were really smart. And in some way or another was going to go into a career in science. So that was a, that was a real high point for me. It was. Yeah, it was great. There was a lot of, of, of students from UT out there as well. So um, you know, typically you're thinking of South by Southwest as this big, you know, it's, it's a big party for music and, and, and movies, but with the interactive uh, that, that we were there for, you, you got to see this, um, people be curious and people be actively curious looking at what's going on, even if they didn't know we were going to be there. You see this four-story tall model of a telescope. You, you can't not just walk by and have no idea and have no questions about what it is. Mm -hmm. And so we were, we had a really good vantage point for where it was, right over there by the river and by the, the Palmer and Long Center. Now, the but flip side of that, though, I just want to interrupt you real quick. There were, there were lots of people out there who had no idea what JWT right. was, and even worse, didn't even know about Hubble. So. <laughs> right. But we, that, that gave us a lot, you know, it, it gave us a large way to start with. We, you know, it's not like typically, I know you and I have had conversations in the past about doing our shows and that we feel like we're preaching to the choir. And it was really an interesting way that we weren't always preaching to the choir. We got to talk to many different people from different points of view and bringing them up to speed on everything that's going on, whether it be a general astronomy lesson or talking about some of the specifics going on with, with what James Webb is going to do. So it really allowed us to, I know I felt I got to spread my wings a little bit more than just preaching to the choir. I did get to actually go through and talk with, you know, I. I interacted with kids, Tony. It's crazy. Uh, but you were a kid. What are you talking about? Right, yeah. <laughs> I, I talked with people 20 years younger than me. And, oh, okay. <laughs> and, but it, it was great. <laughs> but it was, it was great because it's something that I don't typically do. You know, I, if I'm doing any astronomy classes, it's, it's in a college, and I'm, you know, I'm teaching 18 to 22-year-olds. And when, you know, being able to watch these curious minds come up and they're blown away by just the, the mammoth size of the model and looking at the the wall they had all the, the different steps of the deployment of James Webb and their, mm -hmm. their curiosity was interesting just sparked and <clears throat> you see this in other areas too where you know there's nothing like astronomy to do that you could be at a star party I love to be the guy that shows somebody Saturn for the first time through a telescope right because it's just like, it just blows them away. They're like, whoa, and they just, you know, get completely out of, uh, oh, out yeah. of breath looking at it. It takes their breath away and to see the, and then the questions start coming, you know. You know, I've always had, oh, is it true about black holes and, and really how far away is the sun? And they just want to know everything there is to know and it just comes gushing out the minute they right. see it. And so there's oh, yeah. a lot of economy for that. There, there was one young kid there that reminded of me when I was young, and which is scary, it was really <laughs> scary. Um, but it was really inquisitive, and I had a lot of questions when I was younger, but I didn't get those answered until I was older, and I was able to self-study. But he, I want to say he was maybe nine years old, and it, he knew enough general understanding of quantum mechanics and how it works, which blew me away, first of all. I was like, and so he was just asking question after question after question after question. It was, it was great, and we... They were just passing by trying to go to the gaming center, and he dragged his entire family into the NASA tent. said, I want to do this. I don't want to go to the gaming expo. I want to go to NASA. And you know, he got his picture taken with the James Webb Space Telescope, and it was really cool being able to see someone that, you know, their family let them be curious and let them follow that line of, you know, he's got some questions. I'm sure that his parents might not know what to do with him with all these questions that might be a little bit beyond their knowledge. So the way that he was able to drag them, like, let me go to a place where I can get these answers. And he did. And there was a lot of really great talks going on there. We had a Nobel laureate. We, um, it was, which was great. His talks were fantastic. Mm -hmm. that Mathers was giving, 
But it was, it was really great being able to see the public interact in such a wide variety of ways. It wasn't just one type of content being put out. We were all interacting with one another with different stations, whether it be with the Xbox Connect or with the Microsoft BizWall or some of the, the materials that are going to be putting up on James, on James Webb. People had a tactile way of, of being familiar with what's going on while learning about astronomy. Yeah, I really. Uh, that's another thing. I, I guess I got. I took out of the whole, uh, the whole event was uh, learning about the, the worldwide telescope that Microsoft's developed. That thing is enough to make me want to actually get a Windows box. So um, I may because it only runs under Windows. So that I would love to try and make some video uh, B-roll material for using that because I can design my own scenes and create my own animation. And so I talked to John, uh, Jonathan. Uh, um, what was his last name? Uh, the the Microsoft guy. Anyway, he yeah, told me how I. I knew you talking about. Yeah, he's he's the one that uh, taught told me how I could go about doing it for video, and I'm going to try that. Uh, oh, you, you know. yeah, we'll have to change notes on that because I wanted to do some too. Yeah, and so I, I've got my Windows box, um, but I just I didn't have time to play with WWT. I've got it installed. Just said, yeah, you want to get the client? You can do it on on the web, but the client, the local client, apparently has a lot more features and it's faster right. and everything. So you guys. Yeah. If you're watching this and you don't know about it, look up Worldwide Telescope. It's really cool. It's a neat little tool. Uh, it's something that you can use in addition to something like Stellarium to sort of visualize the night sky. It's awesome what they've done. Yeah, it's, it's really cool. Um, when we were doing our Saturday morning hangout, it was playing in the background. Mm -hmm. So on the visual behind us, which was insane, 20 million pixels. Um, but it was they had the worldwide telescope on in the background. They had the the touch screens as well to each side of us where people could go up and and play with it. You know, you're playing with space. And uh, I was talking with the the planetary class here um, on, on campus the other day, and a lot of them were getting frustrated with approaching science and approaching astronomy, especially. And like the 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 biggest tool I find with approaching astronomy is you need to learn how to use your imagination and to zoom out, because we're thinking of scales that we're not familiar with. It's something that we're, we're not used to thinking in astronomical units. We're not think, used to thinking in millions of kilometers or billions or light years. So to learn to use your imagination and become familiar with that scale, and I think you know programs like Worldwide Telescope and Stellarium allows you to play mentally, you know, use your imagination and play on those scales to become familiar with that, <clears throat> with what's going on there, so you can better understand the science that are going on after it. And I think that's the biggest hurdle for people that are, are non, you know, not necessarily into astronomy to become familiar with it, or at least you know more accepting, is to use tools like this to allow their their brains to play. And once you're allowed to play with it, you start become familiar with this with your situation and with the scenario around you. And then it makes the science a little bit more approachable because you're used to being on that scale now. And now you can see how the, the physical forces are interacting and why different things are happening the way they are. And I, I think with a lot of people, I know me especially, that's what's helped me out. And I know a lot of my students that I've worked with that once they learn how to zoom out in their mind, it really helps with the, the hard science and doing the maths and everything like that. Yeah, and I, and on the on that topic of just sort of preaching to the choir, there's this is another that's another tool that kind of gets people who might ordinarily not be interested in science into it. And I just like to also point out that the stuff that you guys are doing with these hangouts is also another way in which you can grab an audience you wouldn't have. Now I know for the most part you're preaching to the choir. Almost everybody that watches you or you know watches these are in and, and in social media it's really it's really easy to just niche yourself into only a certain audience. But every once in a while, somebody will stumble on what you're doing, and then you'll get, you'll get somebody new. And that, I think, is really important. So that's another way in which you guys, I think, are really doing a great job of getting out the word about oh, astronomy. Yeah, definitely. I mean, when even doing our live events there, or not even just doing our outreach, I met so many people. I, I met a couple, um, some administrators from school districts, and they were really interested in, in the curriculum that CosmoQuest is building. As far as you know, so our show like Learning Space, which is all about getting educators and helping educators reach out with space science and astronomy. Um, I, I met a couple parents at homeschool, and they're really worried about subjects like astronomy because they don't know much about it, but they realize its importance. And so it was really interesting the fact that it's not something we we are 
you know, we get to deal with on a daily basis with our hangouts, but being able to be out there in real in in real life in, in meet space, as I like to call it, mm-hmm. and 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 meet people that don't you know don't follow us typically that aren't really familiar with what's going on, but they still want to to know and they are still looking for ways of of what we're trying to do and we're all having this conversation together and i um i i'm I firmly believe the fact that we're not just pushing out content because anybody can create content and push it out but when you I'm sorry, that's just not true <laughs> there's a lot of people it's hard i mean it is it's hard i mean I, I i people can go up and 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 you know uh maybe make a video once or twice but I don't think to, it takes a lot of work to make. This oh, it does make a lot. Of, yeah, and you took. I think it was twelve hours. I counted you on doing uh, when you were working your video. On uh, yeah, on that one because I kept getting. You mean space fan? Space yeah, space fan. Space fan. Yeah. Well, that I, I you know I did kind of mess you up a little bit. You had to do a lot of edits because. <laughs> yeah, thanks, dude. Thanks, you're welcome. <laughs> So yeah, if anyone hasn't seen the latest episode of uh, Space Fan News, there, he yeah. always has a gag reel at the, the end. The are, are extensive in this one. No, yeah. the, um, and I think I, you cut out half of them. Yeah, nominally, I can do it. I can do an episode in six hours from the time it, I, I usually spend about an hour or two on the script, two hours making it and editing the the part that I'm in, and then another two hours adding the graphics and then putting the credits to the graphics on. So I can get it down to six hours. That one took a lot longer because I was doing all kinds of other things at the same time, and I couldn't concentrate in there. I don't know about you, but I had to write a blog post every day while I was there, and I couldn't. I just couldn't focus. You know, I'm sitting across yeah. from Frank, who's just. Nah, 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 nah. Right. I don't know. Frank is crazy like that, though. <laughs> I love Frank. No, I was the same way. I, I was doing my Twitter, Cosmo Quest Twitter. Um, my Google Plus, Cosmo Quest, Google Plus, Facebook, um, <laughs> blog posts, doing Hangouts, and then we were also doing our um, our in person outreach. So we had times to be at the booth and to interact with uh, doing citizen science. So yeah, it was really hard to concentrate. Yep, yep. But it was really easy to sleep at the end of the night because you just collapsed. Oh my God, I know. What little we got. So it was funny. You know, you talk about meat space. So I actually use that word in one of my blog posts. Now, all of my blog posts have to be copy edited because it's on the Institute website. Right. So I got this. But they made an exception for the uh, for the event because they, it, things had to get up quickly and they were it was over the weekend and they weren't working. Well, so the copy editor is going over my blog post and she goes, "You have this thing in here called Meet Space. What is this? Did you mean? <coughs> did you mean M E E T Space?" Or and I said, "No." Oh, uh, it's painful. Thank you. <laughs> <coughs> So uh, I said, no, that's what I meant to say. And so she looks it up and she goes, oh, I see. But usually it's one word, meat space, and not meat space space. So, uh, you know. I, well, now you know the syntax of using meat space. <laughs> you need to use it correctly. Yeah, but she hadn't seen it before. She was, she was like, what the heck is this? So they knew I that's, that's hilarious. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, I get that question, too, because I'll, I'll use the term meat space, and people think I'm talking M-W-E-T. Like, what are you talking about? And or don't just don't understand what I'm saying. Like no meat, as in like we're meat popsicles and we. <laughs> so did you make that up? Is that your is that your thing? Oh no, I, it's something that I, I'm sure I picked up from somewhere. Oh, because like, you're the only person I've ever I've ever heard of you. You and Nicole. Yeah, Nicole Pamela uses it as well, and yeah, you know, we have <laughs> we have our own vocabulary of random stuff we like to use <laughs> because well, life's too short. All right, I'm going to go to the questions real quick before I, I die some more from coughing. Um, let's see here. I can't see any of them, so I'll just let you. I was just on the event page is what I'm looking at because I'm lazy, and this is very last minute. Let's see here. Um, yes, um, Christine, um, sorry, Grossbinner. Uh, so, yeah, Bobak was leaving the gaming expo. Yeah, uh, Bobak and the, the JPL team, their social media team, was out there at South by Southwest Interactive. Uh, I believe they won the award, too, um, for for doing outreach with the MSL Curiosity I heard that. social media campaign. And if, if you guys haven't followed any of them on, on Twitter, Twitter especially, they're really big on Twitter. They're hilarious. Um, they're really engaging with the uh, with uh, with the public. We had a lot of fun there. I was there at JPL when it landed, and 
between the press conferences and doing the the NASA social events that were going on there. It's a really great group of people that are really interested in making sure everybody is is knowing what's going on with the, this fantastic science that's being done all over the place. So yeah, the Bobak was there. He got his picture taken, and oh, Bobak is the, the Mohawk guy, the NASA Mohawk guy. Um, but really cool. He's the I think the systems engineer. I think that's what he is. I think that's what his, his real job is, instead of being just the, the pretty mohawk guy. Yeah, you know he can never shave that now, right? He's going to always have that mohawk until he <laughs> turns into an elderly man. He's gonna... What I love is you know, during the the press conferences, it's you know it was brought up before he became a viral sensation. So this is something that we were discussing at the NASA press conferences. And he's been doing this for a long time. He's oh, always yeah. had a weird haircut for these big events. And apparently it just cut his stars and stripes mohawk just caught the uh, just caught the nation's eye and caught the world's eye and so he how did follow he up with was he was he on uh, he was in the background or something for the yeah, he, was, he was there at uh, he was there at uh, Mission Control and okay. they just they just saw him on, on NASA TV as it was landing and people just fell in love with him. I mean, it, you know, he is a pretty man, so I can totally understand. And that is a that is a nice haircut he's got. Yeah, but perfect. I I I used to have crazy hair like that. Now I just shave it all. Like it's <laughs> far too lazy. And, heck, you can actually see I I've been too lazy. I haven't even shaved recently. So. Oh wow. Yeah, I know. I'm kind of furry. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see, Lars Rai um, Yepinson Yepinson. Said, well, I have no background in astronomy and accidentally stumbled across your Hangouts a couple months ago. I've been watching every single one since then. Really, really interesting to follow. So thanks. Thank you. That's that's what we love hearing, that we are trying just to get as many people out there and trying to be as interesting as possible, even though we do feel like we're just a bunch of nerds talking to each other. Um, we are really, that's one of our biggest things that we're passionate about, is trying to connect with anybody that is at least curious and see what we can do is starting that conversation up and it's a, it's a big give and take we don't want to just push content out but we do want to hear back we want to build a conversation because we uh, i believe and i know a lot of our, our team believes as well that we have to we have to learn about the universe together it's not just a couple people we all have this ability because we're all part of this universe and we can um, better help understand it together uh, let's see here, Guido Bibra, it's a good grief, I've never tried the Worldwide Telescope, need to do that ASAP. Um, I hope my ancient machines can run it. Um, I don't think, I mean, I've got a beast of a, of a Windows box, so I don't have to worry about that, but I'm not sure what the technical um, requirements are, but having a decent graphics card probably would help, so having a discrete graphics card would probably be... Because. Yeah, I mean, I was looking at Frank while he was making the tours for it for the for the events and for people's talks, and uh, he's got this basically beefy it's like a desktop replacement. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's what he calls it. Uh, yeah, it's just a desktop replacement. It weighs about eight hundred pounds and right. carries it around. And and it's got uh, a hand crank. Yeah, he's <laughs> got a little generator that goes with it. Right. Everything else. So yeah, but and so it it's not going to be easy on your on your hardware. Right. Um, and I've I've run the client on my machine here a little bit, but I'm I'm also running an overclocked Intel i5 with a an NVIDIA GTX 560 graphics card. So I've got a decent machine for doing stuff like that um, for video editing. But so it, it runs decent on here. But I've run it in the the browser on my MacBook, and it, it runs okay. But you're doing everything to the browser and not on your native hardware. So. Um, you, you might need to take a look at the, the tech requirements, but it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of tours already built into it to help you understand and learn about astronomy. And then if there's things that you really enjoy, it, you can actually learn to create your own tours and show it off to different people. So it's Yeah, fun. you definitely, definitely do that. All right, let's see here. Um, Tom Nath, you, you can use the Xbox controller and operator the, to operate the Worldwide Telescope. And it's true, they were using the Kinect at at the, the NASA experience tent we're at. So people were using the the, the the Xbox Connect controller and visualizing moving everything out without touching anything. They're just letting the sensors, you know, their their inputs from the sensors. So it, it really gives you that immersive environment of instead of just having, you know, a mouse and keyboard 
to play with it on a computer, you can actually hook up uh, the Kinect or, or 360 controller and play in space and really, really... really that was pretty funny. Fun. Jonathan Fay is his name, by the way. I just remember. Oh, that's right. He's up there. He's up there, like, gyrating and, and you know, moving around, moving the, you know, moving the universe, like, you know, with his hands and stuff. I am God. <laughs> it was really cool. Right. But yeah, he works at Microsoft Research up in Seattle, I guess. Yeah, and, and the, the people from Microsoft, Microsoft over there were fantastic. They I mean, were. We had a great, great time, and all the volunteers that came out too was fantastic. We especially when we had to shut down the tent early, and we were all moving, we're breaking everything down as fast as possible to conserve any of the the tech equipment, making sure we didn't have any projectiles in case a, a tornado came through. <laughs> or as little projectiles as possible. Yeah, that was Saturday night, right? <clears throat> it was Saturday night. Yeah, that was. And there's very little damage, if if any. I don't think anything major happened, mm -mm. which I, I think was good. You know, the carpet got really wet, but we had, you know, I mean, talking about the kind of equipment. I mean, there was one guy from Microsoft. I think he stayed there all night. Uh, oh. No, no, it wasn't Microsoft. It was uh, one of the contractors from NASA stayed there all night just to make sure the model was going to be okay because you know that thing is just a big sail sitting yeah, out. Yeah, right. And you know, sixty mile an hour gusts or whatever they had, you know. <laughs> right. Well, it's funny because something we we're talking about. But I I need to copyright this or the patent pending. But yeah, we could turn on. We can make JWST kites. Use yeah. the Use the mirror. At, you know, use the secondary as where the string ties up to, and fly kites around. You no, know, I think the design for JWST is a public domain, isn't it? It's a government program. At least a good taxpayer space. Well, I'm talking about the toy I'm making. Oh, oh, that. Yes. Well, you can you can definitely patent that. No, I'm <laughs> kidding. <copyright> that. <laughs> totally kidding. No, it's it, if anyone hadn't seen, let me actually pull up some. But to be honest, pictures. that's actually not a bad idea. That would make a great kite, wouldn't it? That would be a really good. And kite. we can actually have it to to deploy the first time you use it, or even have it have it go back town together if you want to stow it, <laughs> pull it out again. We can have it go to the same motion. Yeah. <laughs> you need to be an entrepreneur now. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to pull up some of my pictures because I don't have all of my pictures on this machine, but I will try to do a screen share from from Google Plus. <clears throat> and then yes, uh, uh, I did kiss Camilla, but then Camilla cheated on me with Alberto, so we have a a vicious love triangle. That's true. Right in front of me too. I know right in front of me. Pretty brazen. Pretty I brazen. was I was shocked. Let's see here. Photos from post. I guess my, my most recent post is with you and me. That was such a door. We were so exhausted and just got silly. So the <laughs> the picture of Tony and I that's on my Google my Google Plus page right now. Um, yeah, we were just we got silly. We were just beyond tired. <laughs> like. I forgot. Was I just being grumpy? I'm like, fine, don't give me a hug, and a group hug thing. It was, it was funny. Here we go. Uh, let me share this. Okay, I'm gonna show my. I'm gonna show my favorite picture too. Okay. If I if I can, uh, pull it up. All right. So this is the full scale model of it. So, seeing if this is coming across with my my mouse. So here's the, the solar shields going on. So this is going to be blocking the solar radiation coming through to the primary mirrors right here that are hexagonal. And the way that the, the stitching is done here as well, so if any micrometeors are coming through, they're, they're stitched in such a way that it's not going to continue tearing. So if anything you know, catastrophic does try to happen, it will actually stop it. And let me see here. Pull up Tony's view as well. Yeah, didn't that one go into APOD? Yeah, yeah. That was taken by uh, one of the photographers from, from Grumman. Uh, what's his name? Yeah, Aaron, I think. Something. Aaron, yeah. A fantastic photographer. Yeah, I put a caption on it called Just Like Downtown because that looked, I mean, that was that just the epitome of, of that phrase to me. So, uh, right. yeah, that was my favorite photo they took the entire time. And it was, I think it was like a three second exposure. You know, it was something's, but. Well, but yeah, he had to do a lot of other things to it too because look at those clouds. Right. Uh, the HDR going on. Skyline in the background, so yeah, it's it's all really perfect. 
yeah, he, he set that shot up beautifully. And, yeah, so at night it was it was lit up and the, the, the lights were changing all over the place. It was really cool. And if you see our uh, our hangout on Sunday night, you can see over time the lights are changing uh, with with the James Webb Space Telescope. But, yeah, we, we had just a whole lot of fun. Um, we got to do a lot of science. And yeah, here's a – to give you guys some context to how crummy the weather was, here's a panorama of – so you can see here's the James Webb Space Telescope. Here's the skyline. And here's just the wet ground. It was just so nasty out. <laughs> <laughs> Did you take that? Yeah, I took that. And yeah, it was just it was not fun. It was it was. I'm I'm, I'm thinking that's a big reason why I'm so sick because we did spend a lot of time outside. <laughs> That'll do it. <laughs> and and then Sunday was sunny, but it was cold. So even though uh, even though it was it was nice out as far as weather went, it was still pretty chilly and rainy or and um, and windy. So. Looking at the comments, I think we are, are done here, and I am going to take more medicine and pass out. But yes, Tom Nath, astronomers in love. That's 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 me and Tony. <laughs> yeah, we're going to be on E Channel soon. I think we are. We are. It's going to be great. <laughs> Let's see, Rob Kroll uh, says that his seven-year-old MacBook uh, um, Worldwide Telescope works. And how? How do you get a MacBook to run it? I, it needs to run in the browser, so I can, it oh. doesn't have the client itself. So yeah. I run it on my MacBook in. Um, but I understand in, that's a that's a very limited version of what it can do uh, on the the web client. That's mm -hmm. my understanding. You can do a lot more with the local one. Right. All right. Well, thank you everybody for for dealing with uh, the the late start and and me being sick. Uh, I sent Nicole a message. I'm sure she's sleeping because uh, Timothy, the one that made the comment earlier, that's uh, that's her man, and she, he just moved in. So, uh, so I'm so sure she's cool. sick. Fraser was at Google, and I think he's on his way back to to Vancouver. I'm half dead, and Pamela's working a lot, so she's got a lot on her plate right now. So yeah, so I look forward to your your hangout next week because this was a big week for Alma, and uh, and I'd like to hear more about what she what she found out when she was out there. So she did do a hangout with Matt Kaplan from the Planetary Society as well while they were out there. Oh, okay. Yeah, so um, which is funny because they they were having a little bit of oxygen deprivation, so you, they're really silly. Oh, really? And, <laughs> and if anyone doesn't know Matt Kaplan. Um, He's, he's from uh, Planetary Radio, fantastic guy. If, uh, if any of you are not uh, members of the Planetary Society, please go over to planetary.org and become members. It's, it's a great... He's awesome. Yeah, it's, and Matt's phenomenal. Whether he's doing any Hangouts on Air or when they do live recordings of Planetary Radio with, uh, with Bruce Betts, Dr. Bruce Betts, it's, it's always a great time. We have a lot of fun. They're here locally in Pasadena by me, so I get to see them in, in person every once in a while. But, um, yeah, it's today, today's Friday. So the next Hangout is going to be the virtual start party. Hopefully uh, everyone will be back to being somewhat human again. And we will take you all on a on our tour of the universe from the backyards of many of our astronomers from across the world. So we look forward to seeing everyone out there. Tony, thank you for... Uh, Oh, for jumping in and being my co-host today. I was just sitting there commenting away. You're yeah, like, <laughs> in here. <laughs> no, thank you for inviting me. I do appreciate it. Yeah, thank you again. Uh, I'm sorry to hear you're not doing well. Hopefully you'll get feeling better soon. Well, the fever broke, so that's a good thing. Yeah. So, all right, everyone. Well, thank you again, and we will see you on Sunday. All right. Bye, guys. <laughs>